Guys, as much as I love making videos for seven people to watch, make it easier for people to find me on YouTube by clicking the like button and also subscribing. And if you haven't already, check out the attrition playlist where we take a horse from a yearling sale all the way to a group one. All right, punters, we're back. Got a pre-race of Attrition's 11th start. Uh, Attrition takes his 11th start in the Futurity Group 1, 1,400 metres today at Caulfield, Blue Diamond Day. Uh, so just to catch you up on where we are at with Attrition, last time we saw him, he won the Group 1 Turak Handicap at 40 to 1. Uh, obviously, a bit of celebration after that, and then he was... Set for the Golden Eagle, one last run at the end of his prep, a throw at the stumps, a big prize money. Um, so what happened? Why did he scratch? So attrition drew barrier 19 of 20 in the Golden Eagle. Uh, we were going to run him, but on the day that he was supposed to leave for Sydney, the stewards in Sydney wanted to have some trot-up footage of him just to make sure that he was sound before uh, putting on the float. So... There was no issues with him up until that stage. He'd worked after the tour arc, come through that run really well, and there was no real reported issues. And then as a formality, they had to take this trot-up video just before they put him on the, the float to go up to Sydney. And when they pulled him out of the stable in the morning, uh, he was lame. So I had a bit of a look, and he had uh, curb hoc, uh, which is an inflamed Achilles tendon, I would say, if, if you're talking in human's terms. So, unfortunately, uh, we had to scratch from that race. All the connections were up in Sydney. We went to Manly for the long weekend over Melbourne Cup weekend with the family, obviously, to watch the horse. Um, and I got the news. I got the text message when I was walking out of the terminal in Sydney. So, yeah, it was a long taxi ride to our Airbnb in Manly. Uh, had a good weekend anyway with the family up in, up in Sydney. So, that was all good. A little bit of a sour taste watching watching the uh, Golden Eagle in the pub in Manly, in the, St in the Stain Hotel, because we thought that we, were, we would be competitive in that race, but obviously we didn't go there, and that's history. So he went to the paddock early, uh, which is probably, I'm hoping, in a, is going to be a blessing in disguise. He has had extra time in the paddock to really develop into the horse that we always thought that he could be, um, and he's definitely come back. Uh, he looks like he's an absolute monster. So we always thought, you know, at the end of his four-year-old season, his five-year-old year, he was going to be the finished article. He wasn't quite there at the start of the four-year-old season, and he was able to win a Group 1 in the Turak Handicap. But I think we're now starting to see the finished article. So takes his start today in the Futurity. We elected not to go to the oar and run him twice over 1,400 just didn't think that was the best thing for his prep. We're trying to keep him lightly raced as much as possible and really make him a grand final type horse. Um, so he takes his first start today, 1,400 metres in the Futurity. Mr. Brightside, winner of the All two weeks ago, uh, backs up again in the Futurity. Obviously, uh, the best horse in Melbourne, if not Australia. Uh, you could make an argument at the moment for Fangirl, but uh, definitely the best horse in Melbourne, and is a dollar forty favourite. So we've got attrition. He's drawn barrier eight. I think he would have drawn barrier nineteen if he could have, but he's drawn barrier eight of eight, uh, which is par for the course with attrition. Doesn't like to do it the easy way, and he's kind of to win his races. He's kind of had to do it the hard way, and he's been unlucky a few times. And maybe this will be no different, but. At least it's a small field. There's only eight in it. So I'm hoping that there's no real bad barriers. I think the tempo is going to be critical. He's going to be, I think he's going to be towards the back of the field. I think a lot of the other horses are all drawn inside. Mr. Brightside's drawn in barrier five. And I think uh, depending on what Mr. Brightside's intentions are, I think that'll set the tempo for the race. If he, if he takes his medicine and goes back, I think they'll all find a spot. They'll go pretty slowly, I think, and try and out-sprint him. Um, but if he shows intent from the barrier, I think they could all kind of rally up to try and keep him keep him out um, keep him out wide and make him work for it. So I'm not sure how that's going to go. Ben Mellum takes the ride today. Bo Mertens had a fall recently uh, and couldn't, couldn't ride. Um, so the ride's gone back to Ben Mellum. 
it's no big deal. Ben Mallum knows the horse. He rode him. He rode him every start last prep, apart from the two rack handicap, just because he he couldn't make the weight, and that's when kind of Bo come on the scene. So Ben Mallum back on board, one of top class jockey in Melbourne. So no issues there. We'll leave it up to him. Um, whether he tries to get on the back of Mr. Brightside if he goes forward and try and get some cover and expose him late or whether we just take our medicine, go to the back of the field and just hope there's a little bit of carnage up front because we know that he'll be, he'll be coming strong. He'll be coming strong at the end of the race. Um, so in a little bit of the same scenario as what we were with Amelia's Jewel, uh, probably a, lot, a, a bit more class with Mr. Brightside. He's obviously... the the best horse in Melbourne, if not Australia. So to try and have the arrogance to find reasons why you can beat him uh, is a little bit hard, but I think there are chinks in his armour, the same as there were for Amelia's Jewel. So uh, I think $1.40, I think that's just lazy bookmaking and lazy punting. Uh, $1.40, Mr. Brightside, I don't think that um, that we're a $9 chance versus Mr. Brightside. I don't think that we're that much different of a horse. You know, we came against him once in the PB Lawrence. We were stuck three wide. He kind of got the box seat and the gun run. Um, and if you compare yourself to the likes of Pinstripe that was on the back of Mr. Brightside inside us, uh, we probably lost a few lengths coming around the last turn. And I think the horse did well to rally and kind of finish off, but... If you go back and look at Pinstripe's run, he's right in behind Mr. Brightside. Mr. Brightside obviously probably takes about half a length off Pinstripe in the run home. So I'm not trying to say that the Pinstripe would beat Mr. Brightside. But I just think, I think we're a better horse than Pinstripe. Um, and I think we would have been, given the same situation, we could have been taking some length, some of the length off Mr. Brightside. We probably wouldn't have beat him. Uh, but I think we could have finished closer to him and I don't think there's that much of a margin between the two of them. And that was attrition first up in his four-year-old season, uh, 1,400 in, a, in his first weight for age group one uh, and probably still a peak Mr. Brightside at that stage. So um, so that's the kind of the benchmark that we're working off. We then went to a fee and stakes where we flew home behind Pinstriped um, and then went to an Underwood where obviously the horse wasn't right on the day. Colts in the spring, you know, it's it, that we just have to write that one off. Um, and that's why you got $40 in the two rack. And I think I think there's a little bit of a hangover from that as well with the betting at the moment. They've opened him up $9. I think SP betters are looking at his win in the two rack and because he was, you know, in the market at $40, uh, I think they, they write that off as an anomaly and a bit of a boil over. But, you know, that was our grand final, the whole prep. That's what we kind of set ourselves up for. And, you know, we won the race because we were the best horse. So that was a, that was a blue on the behalf of the bookmakers. Um, we knew we were going to win that race. So we, we got the fill up on the day as well as the prize money. So we're now sitting here with a group one winning stallion. Uh, that opens the door for some offers. Turak Handicap probably isn't going to get him there uh, or isn't going to create any urgency for some offers, but... I think a wait for age group one against Mr. Brightside will definitely have some offers coming in thick and fast. So it uh, could be life-changing today for us. Um, and, yeah, so I've gone back and I've had a look at some different horses that have kind of profiled at the at the level of Mr. Brightside. And from what I can kind of tell, most of the horses have, have a breakout group one in common. A lot of them are a handicap group one. So you've got attrition's two rack. You got Mr. Brightside won the Doncaster, so the Doncaster and the Turak seem to be a breakout group one for a lot of top class weight for age horses. So you know Mr. Brightside's been through that. There's a lot of other horses recently that have been through that. You know the Golden Eagle also is a good form race for weight for age group one horses, which we we thought we would have been pretty firm in the market for that as well. So we think we're kind of on that path. And then once they have their their breakout group one. You know, they spend a year to 18 months at the top of the game, peaking and running in massive races and winning massive races until they start to um, come back down to earth. So I'm just trying to plot out that trajectory for ourselves and Mr. Brightside. Um, so Br Mr. Brightside, I think his five-year-old year, he was at the peak of his powers. Uh, I think that's his absolute peak. And then he's had 
the spring in his six-year-old year already, where he's obviously continued that peak. And I'm just hoping that this prep is the one where he starts to show that he's not quite where he used to be. And, you know, our story is that we are about to hit that peak period. We had our breakout group one at the, at the start of our four-year-old season, which is six months in front of Mr. Brightsides. And then, you know, I'm hoping that we're looking forward to a good year and 18 months of uh, potentially being at the peak of our powers and, you know, win, running in and winning uh, group one weight for age races. So uh, this could be the crossover point or this prep could be the crossover point or maybe, you know, that crossover point isn't going to kind of present itself until next spring when we're a five-year-old and Mr. Brightside's a seven-year-old. So, But I think we're definitely in the argument. I don't think $9 versus $1.40 is a real accurate, uh, an accurate description of where both horses are at. Uh, I think we're going to be a lot more competitive than what the market is currently saying so which is good it's nice to go to the races as the underdog uh with not a lot of expectation on it's a it's a beautiful day in uh, melbourne the weather's been very hot in the lead up to this race which is fantastic because the horse will relish a four and if a three presents itself he'll probably enjoy that even more uh he'll be fresh um and the other, the other side of the story that probably is a little bit untold that we might be able to find out a little bit about is how um, a stallion kind of progresses th through that peak period. So we've got a six-year-old gelding versus a four-year-old stallion. Um, you know, there might be something to tell at the end of this that if you can keep the tackle intact, maybe the ceiling is a little bit higher for an entire than what a gelding would be but who knows we'll find we're going to find that out um so i'm just looking for a good showing today i think we're going to be back in the run i think we should have most of the field covered so i think we should be finishing second on on ability um but i also think we can give mr brightside a run for his money I think it'll be pretty hard if Mr. Brightside box seats, but if he has to run outside of his usual race shape, I, I think he could be vulnerable. Um, and I'm just hoping to see that attrition's come back and he's he's still got that electric turn of foot that I think um, any any horse in Melbourne is going to have a hard time overcoming that. So it'll be nice to see him come from the back and kind of charge home. If he picks Mr. Brightside up and wins, fantastic. We'll be going mental. If he if he flashes home and he runs a good second, then you know we're looking at what's what's the next stepping stone. Uh, All Star Mile is on the radar. Australian Cups on the radar, and even a Doncaster Mile might be on the radar in Sydney if the rain stays away and if he 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 can keep his rating of 108. It won't take much to push his rating up. But if if he if all else fails and he ends up still at 108 radar, then the Doncaster will be a big opportunity for him. So. See how he goes today. Uh, wish him luck and have a bet and I hope you clean up. They're set for the futurity. First of the group ones, and away they go. Nugget a touch slow. Pericles bounce quickly. Led early from Mr. Brightside. Dom to shoot. 
and out deeper on the track attrition Buffalo Rivers getting into its work still two off the lead in the first 300 two and a half lengths Nugget followed by Hey Fat Cat and Mutamekas last attrition led on the opening corner but Buffalo River claims it now then came Dom to shoot three quarters of a length away Pericles and Mr Brightside is fifth one off the fence and about five off the lead a length and a half to Nugget Hey Fat Cat two lengths to Mutamek to the railway side 800 metres to go it's Buffalo River three or four lengths in front from attrition and Dom to shoot. So Buffalo River, the old boy, is going to try and steal this. Five lengths, Dom to shoot attrition. Two and a half lengths, Mr. Brightside on the outside of Pericles at the 550. Two and a half to Nugget. Then came Hey Fat Cat. And last of all is Mutamek. Buffalo River approaches the corner at the 400 metres. Still four lengths in front of Dom to shoot. Then came Mr. Brightside. Back behind those attrition. And then Pericles to the outer. Buffalo River as they reach the 250 starting to paddle. Mr. Brightside is eating up the ground now and Mr. Brightside goes to Buffalo River. Pericles a length and a half off Mr. Brightside but it's Mr. Brightside clear and he's going to rack up another one. Mr. Brightside one from Pericles. Buffalo River Dom to shoot. Then Hey Fat Cat slicing through the line was Bunamek towards the end nugget and last attrition. We're back. I've got a post race of Attrition's 11th start in the Futurity. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a horror watch. Um, so when we got to the track, we were watching the first couple of races and we noticed there was a fairly fairly prominent track bias that was going on. Everything was winning from the front and there were some good good horses and favourites drawn in, in some of the races that were uh, not making any ground from the back. So it was... We we're in a bit of a predicament on what we were going to do from barrier eight of eight because your first thought would have been that you just take your medicine and go to the back of the field and hopefully they they run at a fair clip out front and you can kind of sweep over them at the end but that didn't look like that was going to pay too many dividends on the day and the fear was that he'll kind of get back and run on for a nice fifth or something like that um we thought the horse was in good enough shape to kind of win uh so we didn't want to uh automatically just go back to last and not give him an opportunity to win the race so that was the predicament um so in the end the call was that if he jumped well from the barrier kind of ride him positively and see if he can get a spot speed map didn't look like we were going to be able to get a spot so uh really the the downside to that plan would have been that we would have been caught three wide no cover or we would have had to lead um and we've never really seen him lead so that kind of option was on the table because we thought that he was he could do it, and we thought he'd have enough barrier speed to be able to do it well enough that he didn't use all his tickets at the start of the race. Uh, didn't really go to plan, so we bounced. He did jump fairly well, but there were three others inside him that that jumped well. Uh, so rather than be caught, you know, four wide or three wide, no cover, uh, Malum kind of revved him up to take him to the lead. Obviously, Buffalo River overtook everyone and kind of tore away out the front um i don't it didn't look like the horse was too settled in the run um after gene him up early to kind of take him to the lead he did look a little bit uncomfortable than what he what he usually looks like and when they kind of come to the home stretch and he got taken off the bridle he was just going backwards um in the end Malin kind of sat up on him at the 200 and just looked after him but yeah i i, I couldn't make too many excuses from where he got in the run because I think the horses that were around him in the run all finished off the race well enough and they all ended up in the placings and kind of when he come off the bridle, he just paddled. So uh, not 100% sure what's what, what the wash-up is. The first thoughts were that just hopefully that the horse is sound. Um, all indications when he come off the track were that he was sound. He wasn't showing any signs of being lame, but uh, I think we'll find out more in the coming days about how he's pulled up. But yeah, it was pretty disappointing. Would have been nice to just get the confidence up. Even if he didn't win the race, he'd run on with a good sectional and then we'd push on to some other races. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's gone a bit sideways, so I'm not 100% sure where we're going to fall uh, at this point. We're just hopeful that we've got a horse at the end of the day and uh, it's going to be a bit of a wait and see scenario. So that's racing.